Armed militia groups are surging across the nation and police officers are one of the major groups joining them. In this video, we're going to take a look at the explosion of popularity among right-wing militias, why law enforcement officers are fast becoming their number one recruits, and what it all means for the rise of a new conservative age. You're not going to want to miss this. Greetings, everyone. Dr. Steve here with you. Great to be with you, as always. If this is your first time here at this channel, I post two videos a day analyzing current events and analyze some super awesome conservative trends so you can live in the present in light of even better things to come. So if you haven't already done so, you know what to do. Make sure to smack that subscribe button. I see the bell is gone for whatever reason. It will be an absolute privilege to have you as a regular part of this channel as we together, each and every day celebrate the collapse of left-wing globalism and the unstoppable rise of a new conservative age. So let's begin with our video chat question of the day. Do you support the rise of armed militias in our nation? Let us know in the comments section below. Do you support the rise of armed right-wing militias? Let us know what you think because frankly, regardless of whether or not you support them, reports are coming out that they are surging in membership throughout the nation. And we're gonna take a look at not only that surge, but also the extraordinary alliance that's growing between militias and law enforcement. It's pretty amazing stuff. But first, before you do anything else, make sure to click on that link below and head on over to my special website for my Patriot Food Supplies. We saw what the whole pandemic insanity, we cannot wait for an emergency to happen before we respond to one. And no one, no one makes preparing for an emergency more ridiculously easy and affordable than my Patriot Supply. Gang, they're simply the best. Their food kits last up to 25 years in storage. They include breakfasts, lunches, and dinners. And best of all, they got a guarantee policy that will knock your socks off. And if you act now, you can save $100 off a full four-week emergency food supply when you click on the link below to my special website. You heard that, right? A hundred smackers off, so don't wait. I've got my food supply. Make sure you get yours. Click on that link below or go to preparewithsteve.com and save $100 off your very own four-week emergency food supply today. All right, gang, let's dive right in here. We've got some significant developments in the reorganization, the realignment that's going on in our nation in a post-riot reality. Not only are we seeing armed right-wing militias surging across the nation, but now cops, policemen, are joining those militias. I don't know if you noticed, but one of the fascinating animosities that actually completely disappeared as a result of these riots was the traditional animosity between police and militia members. The far left site, The Intercept, recognized this to their own disappointment, but they were shocked to find that the race riots had created a new bromance between right-wing militia groups and police forces. Here is an example of the kind of camaraderie we've been seeing between our militias and the police. Give us, give us a holler, but you know, take care of each other and, and take care of the people in Albuquerque. I mean, some, some of these guys are just dummies. They see crime of opportunity. I'm sure you guys can de-escalate just by talking to them. Yeah, but obviously, with us in uniform, they think of us a little bit different. So, I mean, if you guys just talk to them on that level, I mean, that, that would be great for itself. Thank you. 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 She's actually a spray paint artist herself. So we brought her here as a voice to talk to some of these artists and say, we understand that you have a voice and you want to get your message across, but from artist to artist, there's different ways to do it. So, I mean, she's going to be, she's going to be a lot of I work a lot of the high-risk youth, and so I'm familiar with a lot of the faces. Like, I actually just did a mural um, at the association on board. So, yeah. So, so hopefully she recognizes a lot of these young boys and call them by name and, you know, and just slow them down a little bit. Well, we're out there if you guys need anything for us. Um, Obviously, if you guys see things getting out of hand, just give us a holler. You'll see, just flag down an officer's tongue with us there. Um, I mean, don't put yourself in the shit spot, you know. And mind if anything, we get in the way of we're being more of a distraction than help, just give one of us a call and we'll clear the area as soon as possible. Yeah, what you guys got to do, just be safe. Yeah, we're all going to stay in groups. Two blocks away, because police are moving them from one side, that would be helpful just right there, you know, but... Same time, you know, we'll, we'll get there if you guys 
aren't out. If I see something that's just way beyond us, whatever, we're gonna follow you too. Can you open yourself? Whatever. Yeah. Just so you know, we're not gonna be having our guns out. That's not our plan. Um, it's just, we're just here to help. Yeah. We're all, like I said, we're here for the same cause, man. We're here to help. You guys, anything for us? Give us a holly. Thanks, guys. You guys be safe out there. You guys too. Hey, you guys. You guys, you guys mind if we say a prayer? Yeah. Quick prayer. Now, you'll notice immediately here, these are not white supremacist groups, right? Contrary to so much of what we hear and read in our fake news mainstream Marxist media, you see blacks, you see Latinos as part of these armed militias. It's, it's part of the growing populism that's self-surging across our nation. And it sees the world not so much as left versus right or Democrat versus Republican, but rather people versus the political class, the, the ruled versus the ruling class, who they're seeing as ruling according to their own benefit, not the benefit of those they claim to represent. And one of the manifestations of this is an armed populism or an armed populist resistance that simply doesn't buy into the tribalist and cultural Marxist vision of Black Lives Matter and their cheerleaders among our elite media class. And so it's no surprise that we're seeing a new coalition building of sorts between law enforcement, who of course been thrown under the bus by left-wing mayors and governors who've sided with the rioters and looters. We're seeing a coalition building between law enforcement on the one hand and right-wing militias, the armed populist resistance on the other. Now this attraction of police to militias has already been going on even before the riots. There have been a number of articles reporting on the fact that indeed thousands of both active and retired law enforcement officers have ind indeed in joined militia organizations over the last few years. And we can only imagine that that number is swelling at the moment, given how lawmakers were so quick to disavow the police and start spewing out their defund and disband nonsense. This entire you know, anti-cop culture that's so pervasive among the left is not only, it's just surging militias across the nation. It's, it's a surge that's been going on, however, for some time now. Back in 2017, PBS did a report highlighting a noticeable surge in armed militia activity and membership. Today, there are over 500 militia groups in the United States, more than double the number in 2008. You have groups such as the 3% Militia, one of the nation's largest armed right-wing groups. Their name interestingly enough, comes from the notion that only about 3% of colonialists fought in the Revolutionary War, but were still able to overwhelm and defeat the major superpower of the time, the British Empire. You've got the 3% militia. They have chapters in uh, virtually every single nation, uh, in every single state in the nation. You've got the Oath Keepers. Uh, again, what PBS noticed too is that many of their members are indeed current and former law enforcement as well as military personnel who fought in Afghanistan and Iraq. So you may have heard of the Oath Keepers because they were the ones that showed up in Ferguson, Missouri, right? The, uh, during the riots back then, the Michael Brown riots back in 2015, which if I recall actually started the whole Black Lives Matter movement. But Oath Keepers came to Ferguson to help provide security for reporters working for Alex Jones Infowars. You have uh, the Sovereign Citizens Movement. I mean, we could go on and on. But for me, what is key here in understanding this new bromance between armed militias and law enforcement is that it's all part of the continued political realignment going on in our nation today, which has been going on now for the last several years. Again, this is a political realignment that's going on actually quite literally all over the world, but it obviously has a, its own particular manifestation here in the United States, as it does, you know, in all the different places in the world. Broadly speaking, the political realignment that we're seeing is what scholars call a populist realignment. So what we have to understand here is that populism is a different kind of political paradigm that we've been used to over the last, say, several decades. So, I mean, simply put, the paradigm that increasingly defines our politics is no longer organized around a partisan animosity between Democrats versus Republicans, or right versus left, or even ideologically conservative versus ideologically liberal, big government versus small government. Instead, the new political paradigm that's dominating our nation is one organized around the new animosity between the people versus the elite 
political class. It's a, it's a clash between the ruled versus the rulers. And so what characterized populace is a deep seated suspicion, indeed a radical hostility and animosity towards our elite class, our political, corporate, media, Hollywood, university elites, who are seen as ruling for their own benefit, for their own gain, rather than for the benefit of those they claim to represent. Populists are united by the notion that the customs, cultures, and traditions of a nation are best preserved when taken out of the hands of the ruling corrupt elite and placed back in the hands of ordinary citizens. That's the new political paradigm that's emerging all over the world, and it's in response to globalism, which is governed by a globalist elite, who are technically known in scholarly literature as the expert class. It's a class of technocrats who supposedly have the expertise to govern a single worldwide political and economic system, which we popularly know today as globalism. Now, as part of this political paradigm shift, if you're regular to this channel, you know that we've been analyzing how these race riots that spread across this nation are in fact politically and socially realigning our nation into two fundamentally different groups marked by two different regional or geographical organizations. So on the one side, you have the increasingly tribalistic ethno-nationalist wing that's occupying both our cities as well as our political elite. So this is the pro-Black Lives Matter movement that is fundamentally ethno-nationalist. It's overtly racist, tribalist. They want to return to segregationist conditions where people are deliberately reorganized according to their race with blacks and non-whites in general receiving preferential treatment to counter the supposed evils of so-called white privilege and systemic racism. So you've got that along with the cultural Marxists in our political class, our political leaders, our CEOs, our corporations, our Hollywood elite, our media elite, our university professors are all advocates of radical tribalism, but more in the name of this cultural Marxist understanding of the world. So that's one side of the conflict. On the other side of the conflict, in effect, you have everybody else. You have everyone and anyone, anyone who doesn't bind to this resurgent tribalism or cultural Marxism. And this group is particularly characterized by white working class voters who live in the suburbs and the exurbs. So remember, this is the constituency that gave Trump the election in 2016. So during the primaries, Trump war, won more than 150 counties, where at least eight in 10 people were whites without college degrees working class voters. And then in the election itself, it was actually even more stunning in states like Wisconsin, Iowa, Michigan, and Pennsylvania. We talked about this on a number of occasions. You had nearly 200 counties who defected from their unbroken pattern of voting for the Democratic presidential candidate. Nearly 200 counties that voted for the Democratic presidential candidate by a 20-point margin in every single presidential election since Walter Mondale back in 1984 they switched and voted for Trump by a comparable 20-point margin. It represented a 40-point shift, which was utterly stunning. Make no mistake, this voting base is being energized right now like never before because of these riots. And as a result, we're seeing new coalitions forming, new bromances, as it were, between what would have otherwise been hostile groups, in this case, armed militias, and law enforcement. And so I think this new alliance is but a microcosm of the larger macrocosmic alliances that are forming that signal a surging populist movement that in many respects is only just beginning. Now, before you go, you will definitely want to check out the video I just uploaded on a Democrat state senator actually getting attacked by a left-wing mob. The infighting the left has begun, and it is all but guaranteeing a Republican landslide in November. You're not going to want to miss it, so make sure to click on the link, and I will see you over there. God bless, and have a wonderful weekend.